I'm Gene Park with Launcher, uh, the video game section at the Washington Post, and I am joined with a very special guest, Jason Schreier, news editor for Kotaku.com. Uh, Jason is, uh, I, I think it goes without saying, is one of the more consequential uh, games journalists out there. First of all, I have some concerns that you're wearing like this fancy button down shirt and I'm like here in my schlubby hoodie and I'm just like totally, totally embarrassing myself. Haven't had a haircut in months. Just like a total wreck over here. Um, so thank Clean you, Gene, for though, so embarrassing it's good. me. I did shave. I did shave yeah. this morning. Yeah, um, I decided the the quarantine beard, got to get rid of that if I'm going to be on camera. It's a great honor to have you here to talk with us because we're going to talk about a game that's very, very special and dear to us that we've both been playing for the past week or so, Final Fantasy VII Remake. Final Fantasy VII Remake, I was quite critical of the fact that it's episodic because when I imagine a remake of any game, I want to see it in its entirety. I want to see the entire story. I want to play through the whole thing. Um, and the thought of just like only getting to see the Midgar portion, which in the original game is maybe four or five hours um, of the entire like 40 hour extravaganza of a story, um, that bummed me out it just made me feel like it would be incomplete for a lot of different reasons one of the coolest things about Final Fantasy 7 playing it back in the day was you leave Midgar and you're like holy crap the game has just started we're now in this world map and like there are all these different cities and continents and oh my god it's huge as I played through the game uh, and seeing the story uh, changes, I realized how much of a natural arc that that first uh, Midgar section was. Introducing some characters, building the world, and then having a natural like, like character arcs end where they did. Go and raise some help for me, okay? When I played it and got to the end, I understood what they were trying to do, and I became less angry and more extremely curious about where they're gonna go. I get why that they did it this way, and this felt like a really natural uh, place to, to end it all. Thanks anyway. The writing and the dialogue I, I thought was surprisingly natural and not too cringy. Uh, so then, what can I get you? My money. I'm still waiting on it. The script is surprisingly excellent and it's especially kind of uh, glaring in comparison to the original game script. That script is full of issues, it's full of translation errors and kind of a lot of lines that are incomprehensible. So to get a game like this that really just like treats the script with real care, treats the English dialogue with real genuine love and thought and it's just, it was really refreshing to play it. Give me a minute. No. Why you have to be such a hard bro? I ain't your bro. <laughs> JRPGs and a lot of Japanese games in recent decades have gotten a lot of flack for their voice acting. Um, often for good reason. There's a lot of hammy performances. There's a lot of just awkward dialogue that doesn't translate well when spoken out loud and is much easier to just kind of ignore when you're reading it. Um, but Final Fantasy VII Remake has fantastic performances all around. Like every single performance in the game is great in English. Then the plan is... Marlene, want to go wait for Jesse out front? Okay. Looks like we're officially on for tomorrow night then. Gotta go over the details with the others. Before you do, about my pay. You'll get your money. So sit down and shut up until we're finished. Double time, Tifa. You could certainly get into Barrett being a giant racial stereotype, mm -hmm. but aside from that, I mean, he's still a good voice actor. Like the performance is still good despite being a stereotype. The character itself was always a caricature. Mm -hmm. And uh, and more of a Mr. T character caricature. And the way I, yeah. I I take him in is like he's just a really really hype pro wrestler who just can't seem to contain himself. <laughs> you gonna stand there and pretend you can't hear the planet crying out in pain? I know you can. You really hear that? Damn straight I do. Get help. <laughs> The infamous honeybee and in. i think that was probably the moment that a lot of people were really worried about mm -hmm. um and uh in my opinion like i was thoroughly entertained like they oh knocked my it goodness. out of the park <laughs> They completely changed it. They took out anything that might have even seen 
like borderline homophobic or mm-hmm. transphobic or kind of uh, could be interpreted in a way that was was not great. That was kind of stereotypical like Japanese conservative culture, homophobic culture. And mm-hmm. they've just turned it into this like surprisingly progressive, awesome sequence of events. True beauty is an expression of the heart, a thing without shame to which notions of gender don't apply. It was empowering. I felt powerful after after it. You know, it was it, it was it was such a beautiful moment. It's something that I think we both agree was kind of a weakness with side missions in this game. Mm-hmm. I thought they were pretty boring, and they were the things that were really holding me back in terms of finishing it, because I was like, okay, I need to like this is FF seven. I need to finish every side quest, right? The the weakest part of the game, I would say in general, is anything they added to try to make sure it was forty hours long. So that's the side quest. That's padding out some of the dungeons. Like for example, in chapter five and six, they do a lot of padding to the dungeons that are right before. Um, the second Mako reactor that you had as a crew to destroy. And in the original oh. game, that whole, like, getting into the Mako reactor right, takes, like, three minutes, five minutes. Mm-hmm. And in this game, it takes two hours because it just add, they added all this dungeon stuff to it. Um, and that a lot of that was unnecessary. This remake is also very, very linear, too. Um, that was a question that I was wondering about. I was like, okay, they're, they're, they're going to turn this into a big game. Are they going to give us a free roam area within Midgar to do? And they kind of did that, right? Uh, with s- short little side quests, like chapters that, that, that yeah, you can like. Yeah, but it's side around. quests like going through hallways to, to reach them. So, yeah. Uh, yeah. Not really. In a game that seems in a lot of ways unafraid of fan pressure and unafraid of what hardcore fans will think, it's too bad that Square also felt the need to just like pad it as much as possible. 